Hey, it's Chris from Business of Traders, and in this video, we're going to be talking all things backtesting, and we're going to be using Sierra charts to do this. Now, what are we going to cover in this video? Well, we're going to cover performance tips, we're going to cover potentially debugging tips, and we're going to then look at potentially some advanced strategies when it comes to backtesting. So without further ado, let's jump into the charts. Right, so we're at the charts here. The first thing you need to know is how do we backtest in Sierra charts? So you need this little menu up. How do you get this menu up? Well, let's show you. So you go to the chart, you go to replay chart, and then you go to the replay chart control panel. Now, my first top tip for you is if you're using multiple monitors and you lose this, and when you bring this up, it doesn't come up, then rather than doing reset windows from the windows menu, you need to go to the chart menu, and then you need to go to replay chart and then reset the control panel. So how do we get going? Right, well, it is just as simple as setting the time that you want and then setting the time uh, and then pressing play. Now, there's a couple of important po points to note here. It's choosing your replay mode. The further down you go, the more accurate it is. That's the most accurate, that's the least accurate, right? I find the accurate trading system backtest mode is the best one to get the best trade-off between performance and results. And what do I mean by that? If you're using uh, the Sierra Charts Advanced Studies, then potentially it may skip calculation of those studies if you set the chart replays to be too fast. So it's, it's just an important point to note. What do I have mine set at? Well, if I want really accurate results, the maximum I go to is 30, but I tend to default to 240. Now, another top tip for you is this, is you need to make sure you've got the amount of data loaded for the time that you set. So obviously if we're gonna do uh, one day, that's fine. Uh, in this instance, if we press F5 to get the um, chart settings up, just two secs. You can see there I've got seven days loaded. Make sure that's synced with all the charts that you're gonna use for replaying. So if you're doing multiple time frame analysis and you've got multiple charts, then make sure they're all set to seven. Right, if say for instance, you're uh, loading up seven days worth of data. Now, another important point to note on this, if you wanna speed up your replaying, don't replay charts or all charts in all chart books if you don't need to. If there are charts that you don't need to replay, then use the linking system. Now I am actually gonna go more in depth into links and how to use it and the advantages of linking your chart books in a separate video. But for the purposes of this, I'm gonna show you how I use it for replay. So I've got two charts here that I wanna replay. I, I color coordinate the, the linking so I can see which ones they are. And again, I'm gonna show you that in the other video. And literally, I make sure that those charts are linked. The way you do that is you go to linking and choose a link number. So this is number one. And then also for this one, it's also number one as well. So that's done, that's all sorted. So now that's gonna speed things up because it's only gonna play the ones that I want it to play. Now I start in a paused position so I can just have a quick check as to what I'm doing and check everything's all loaded correctly. And I also skip empty periods. So obviously, if, say for instance, if you do an RTH, I regular trading hours, then obviously here, and that's, picked here on your session times, if that's set to no, then you don't want it to replay through that period. So you wanna skip those empty periods, right? So let's press the play button and let's see what happens. Oh, just two sets, we just stop and reset. So that's another thing, you need to stop and reset. Right, so we're going from the beginning. Enter process speed, I set this to one. So I'm doing multiple charts because I've got a lookup uh, chart here. We're loading the data up. See, because it's only seven days, it's quite fast. That's set all ready for me to go. Now, obviously, what I need to know is what the results are. So I need the results coming up here, and to get that, I attach the trade window. Now, we also want all the trades coming up, so we choose the trade activity log. So we've got the trade activity log up there, right? Now here's another top tip. If you have multiple strategies, then you're gonna need multiple SIM accounts. How do you create that? Now this is set to SIM account one. You go up to general trade settings under global set and trade settings, and then type in SIM. So that gives you the, the access to, and you can see there are a number of simulation accounts, right? 
I always just type it in because there's so many different fields that you can set uh, across uh, Sierra charts, it's just easier. So you can see there, then it highlights that particular field that I need to change. I've got mine set to 10. The default is when you install is one. So obviously that means that if I've got 10 strategies, I can segregate the results into uh, each one of those simulation accounts. Right, so that's set up, it's set to Sim 1 because I was, so I was just gonna do, do this quick test. Right, and let's go. Let's play this back. So it's playing back. Now on this particular strategy that we've got here, basically it comes and it says, right, we're gonna potentially be buying at uh, 174, which we uh, tip the group and I'll just bring this across just to show you. I said, look, we're going to potentially uh, be looking at a potential buy from this level. Once the bot had picked that up. And obviously you can see there, it didn't take the trade there because it goes into a trade manager and it analyzes the harmonics, stroke the volume, and it decided to take the trade there. Now, if we were, say, for instance, back testing this and we needed to um, change one particular setting uh, on, on uh, one of the studies, then we can do this and go replay back. But it's like, well, how do we actually find out the information that we need to know about the different study statuses? So here's another top tip when you're debugging. I don't use the message log, right, a lot, or other than uh, basically uh, just just for um, for if I export it out into a notepad to do, and then I do a search. So I export it all out, right? So I copy everything, copy the log, and then export it out looking for my particular um, uh, debug text now one thing better than doing that and easier is having statuses and writing them into a subgraph right using the uh Excel, um i.e the c plus plus sierra charts or if you're doing the spreadsheet for trading now into a subgraph now i'm going to cover that in a separate video but what i will show you is this is just just to show you how powerful it is is if we go to studies and we choose the study subgraph above and below, right? If you add that to uh, your um, your chart, you then can choose a subgraph. Now we have a number of bots, all these studies, and they <coughs> they spit out statuses, and we have standard statuses buy and sell mode on every single study, and then obviously we put that into the trade engine. So obviously, say for instance, I wanted to see what this particular status is. Right, you can see I have them currently hid, right? I have them all on there, but then I can use them. Now that's at the top of the bar. Now obviously if I apply that, you then can see these statuses come up on each bar. Now if you've got multiple um, studies that you wanna look at the statuses, then just change the offset and change the colors. So then you can, you can be doing your debugging and it's a lot easier debugging. And it's a lot faster doing it this way than trailing through a message log. So that's one of my top tips for debugging for uh, for back testing. So we're just going to uh, hide that because we don't need it on there. And so, say for instance, on this this particular strategy, we said right, we want to um, add the profit maximizer study on, which maximizes the profits uh, for a given uh, when it's in a trade. So it takes the trade and tries to extend the life of the trade out, i.e. holds on for as long as possible. So we can enable that, and then we have sub-studies for this, and you can see there we've got uh, the four point steps named study. So by putting that in and then retesting, right, if I wanted, I could retest and put that test to SIM2 as an example. Right, so I can do stop, right, and then obviously I'm going to go to SIM2 as an example on here, right? And I'm going to apply. So obviously we can see we've already got a bit of testing in there already. Right, we're going to reset all that. So we're just going to reset it all and rerun and update. And you see this work. And you can see that it's come under the SIM2 account. And you can see there that it's not actually changed uh, the results there.